Welcome to the Cinema Odyssey. I'm Robert Taylor. This is Bluebeard, a 1944 noir film written by Pierre Gendron. It was directed by Edgar G. Ulmer with an uncredited Eugene Schuftman as director of photography and Leo Berdotti composing the music. It stars John Carradine, Gene Parker, and Tiala Loring. In the early to mid-1940s, RKO producer Val Luton helped usher in a new era of film horror with his legendary series of films that began with Cat People and include such gems as I Walked with a Zombie, The Body Snatcher, and The Leopard Man. The films had crass titles, but the content within was astonishingly effective. His directors and cinematographers used the same techniques that noir filmmakers were experimenting with during the same period to create an atmosphere where you don't see the danger, but you sure as hell sense it. Working with low budgets, Luton's films were big commercial successes for RKO. Now, over on Poverty Row, some smart producers at PRC realized that they could create similar products in the hopes of achieving the same financial success. Several of Luton's movies were inspired by iconic Gothic stories, even if those stories went uncredited. For example, I Walked with a Zombie is essentially Jane Eyre, and The Body Snatcher is based on Robert Louis Stevenson's short story. So the fact that the filmmakers keyed in on the French story of a man who keeps murdering his wives seemed like an obvious choice for adaptation. The film was given a large budget, well, at least by PRC's standards, at approximately 160000 roughly the same amount that RKO had spent on Luton's Cat People. For their director, producers hired the closest thing PRC had to an auteur, Edgar G. Ulmer. Now, for more information on how a talented guy like Ulmer ended up on Poverty Row, check out my video about Detour. John Carradine, who was a solid main or supporting player in many of Universal's B-list monster movies at the time, was hired as the titular murderer. A period thriller seems like an expensive undertaking, but Ulmer stretched the budget and then, when you think it couldn't be stretched any further, did it a little bit more. Now, without revealing too much, the climax of the movie involves a chase across the rooftops of Paris on what is clearly a built set. And production value like that is normally unheard of for a movie uh, produced by PRC. Though it ends with a whimper instead of a bang, that sequence is still quite impressive. Also surprising, considering the general cheapness of PRC, is that they commissioned a score instead of using archival music specifically from a composer named Leo or Doty. Unfortunately, it is brought up so high in the mix that it's often difficult to pay attention to anything but his music, which can get a little or maybe a lot annoying. Now, although I can't find information about the profit margin for Bluebeard, I suspect that PRC was very happy with both the final product and the film's grosses. Ulmer would be given several plum projects for the company over the next several years. In 1945, he would direct both Detour and a movie called Strange Illusion, before heading PRC's first official million-dollar budget feature, Her Sister's Secret. Bluebeard is a movie that is almost accidentally noir. It was created to rip off horror movies and is in a period setting, and yet it has carved itself a place in history for any noir fan. Thank you for watching The Cinema Odyssey. This is Bluebeard.
I'll go. It's only me. Why didn't you answer when I knocked before? You frightened me, Paul. What are you doing here? Well, I only came to walk home with you. Don't you realize the streets of Paris aren't safe after dark with Bluebeard still at large? <gasps> Janet, the Bluebeard didn't get you. Where were you? What are you trying to do? Drive me to my grave? Constance, it's already as dark as pitch. Lucille, will you hurry? Do you want us to leave and let you walk home alone? Coming, Babette. But you needn't have waited for me. Do you hear her? As if she wouldn't be scared to death to walk alone on the streets these nights. Why do you suppose it is the police haven't caught him? Whom? Whom? Why, Bluebeard, of course. Who else is all Paris terrified of? Oh, Bluebeard. I'd forgotten. Come on, I want to get home. Now let's stay close together for safety. Puppeteer. Hello. Constance here is afraid of her own shadow. When are you going to get the show in the park again? Perhaps quite soon. These are my friends, Constance and Lucille. I forget your name. Gaston Morel. I always think of you just as the puppeteer. You've seen this puppet shows in the park, of course. No, I've missed that. You mean you've missed his wonderful puppet operas? Well, they're great fun. We should like to see one sometime. I should like you to. I haven't been showing my puppets much of late. It's difficult to get a crowd these evenings because of the Bluebeard scare. But if you say you'll come, I'll give one tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? What do you say? Well, I... Of course you'll come. He's afraid of Bluebeard. Aren't you? Mm. What would Bluebeard want with me? I should think he might find you irresistible, mademoiselle. You'll give the puppet show tomorrow night, then? At the same place. We'll be there. Won't we, Lucille? Yes. Tomorrow night. deserted her, and in a fit of despair, having killed her child, finally found the courage to give herself up. She was tried and sentenced to prison, where Faust, with the aid of Mephistopheles, finds her.
go over and help this old uh, demonstrate the puppets to whoever comes back. I'm going to take up the collection tonight. the puppets myself. Did you make the costumes? Well, I designed them. Why? Lucille's a modiste, so it's natural she's interested in clothes. Modiste? Do you think you can make some new costumes for me? Oh, well, I... Come backstage. Let me show you the costumes. <laughs> now, if that was a woman... You wouldn't need no string to make her talk. <laughs> How do you make the eyes move? Oh, the eye. Oh, that's very simple. You see these two strings here. You like my little people, huh? Very much. They seem quite real to me. They're all likenesses of people I've known. Mephistopheles, too? Yes, the evil one, too. Among other things, he's also my business manager. <laughs> and my Gilly. Is she a friend of yours? She was. What? Yes, unfortunately, she met a tragic ending. She must have been very beautiful. They say you'll show me how the puppets work. Let's get out of here until these people leave. They'll be asking endless questions. I can't talk with a lot of people around. I should think in your business you like crowds. As a puppeteer, you mean? As a matter of fact, I prefer creating puppets to performing them. You make them act so well. <laughs> but there's something in your voice that made me feel you'd suffered. You're very discerning. It's your Marguerite, the memory of that tragedy, isn't it? Partly. And you're keeping the tragedy alive deliberately, aren't you? Why, I... If you wanted to forget it, you could create a new puppet. One that would remind you of someone else. Someone who might make you happy. Is it much trouble to create a puppet? It takes time. First I make a sketch. A painting? Do you paint too? Enough to get the effect. Do you know you have very lovely eyes? Truthful eyes. Would you let me make a puppet in your image? Would you like to? Very much. Let's see. <laughs> Are you trying to decide how you'll paint me? No. I'm not going to paint you. Lucille! Lucille! You better go with him. You better stay close to him. But your Marguerite costume. Don't you want me to make it for you? As you please. Oh, looking for you. Oh. Was she difficult? Well, the way she always is when you avoid her. She comes back, tell her I'm looking for her. Which you won't be. Of course not. Good night, Lucille. Good night. Uh, you uh, picked up a little something? What? Uh, oh, you mean some money? Uh, for the musicians, you know. For the musicians, of course. My word of honor.
didn't you stay at the puppet show? And watch you flirt with that girl? Who is she? I don't know. Just a girl. Another, I suppose, to take my job for a few days. A few weeks. And you think you'll come back to me again? I think you'd better go now, Renee. No, no, not this time. Renee? I won't stand for it. I warn you. You'll regret it. Regret it? Gaston, I've regretted it from the start. From the first day I met you. I didn't ask you to fall in love with me. No. Then why did you keep telling me you needed me? That I was necessary to your success? What was I to think? What did you think, Renée? Gaston, these girls, I've known they didn't mean anything to you, really, because you always came back to me. But Gaston, what's happened to them? You think? I got the concierge to let me in. Her bed had not been slept in. I called again a little while ago. She had not turned up. The concierge it was told me that police found another girl in the same this morning. Another victim of Bluebeard, so I got worried. Have you any idea who had a motive to kill her? I can't think of anyone. She was always so kind. When did you see her last? At the puppet show. She left before I did. You can prove that, of course. Of course. You didn't notice if she left with anyone? No, I didn't. It's always quite crowded backstage after the performance. People come back to see how we pull the strings. Renée slipped away before I knew she was gone. You didn't by chance notice anyone in the crowd that struck you as unusual? I'm sorry, I can't give you any information that might help you. We are grateful for your identification. And we will call on you if there's any further way you can help us. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Renal? Yes? Send for Francine Etienne. Rush her back to Paris at once. But, Inspector... At once. Good evening. You have come to tell me when we will give Faust again? Now, how can we give Faust again until we find a new Marguerite? Oh, Mademoiselle Renée is not with us anymore. What a pity. She had a good voice. You have somebody else in mind for Marguerite? 
No. I'm thinking of giving a new puppet show. Show? Yes, yeah, something on the order of a ballet with a lot of new costumes. Oh. What is her name? Lucille Can. Where do I find this one? Madame Blanche, Maurice Chop. When do you want her to sit for you? I'm not going to paint this one. No? Definitely not. I merely wanted to make some costumes for me. <laughs> That's a new one. It's a fact. Nothing more. Just to make some costumes for my puppets. At your studio? I don't know where she'll make them. I don't even know if she will make them. That's what I want you to find out. When? As soon as possible. Oh, and a soldat. Huh? There are two girls, friends of hers. I can trust you to exclude them. My word of honor. I did not come here professionally. That is, not from a standpoint of my profession. I came here on a very confidential mission. To see Mademoiselle Lucille. I'm Lucille. Did you want to see me? Oh, yes. Privately. A certain gentleman has requested me to ask if you would do him a great favor. Who? Gaston Morel, the puppeteer. Oh, the puppeteer? Yes. He wanted to know if he would make some costumes for his new puppets. Why, yes, I'd be delighted to. When? Now. Where is he? At his studio. Why, I'll go right along with you. Yes. He has so many ideas. <laughs> One never knows what he will turn up with next. <laughs> I always hope one day he will make a stumpler after me. Ah, Seal. Uh, I will run it off. A woman's care is lacking here. Is the place that dirty? Oh, like any bachelor quarters. Give me that. It's torn. I meant to throw it away. It's this lovely material. It was my favorite. It 
Give me Joey a stitch or two. Throw it away. Oh, it'd be a crime to. A few seconds will put it right. Why'd you decide not to paint me? In the park after the show, were you going to make a puppet after me? You seemed really interested. Something happened. What? I can't tell you that. Did I do something or say something? No. Were you disappointed after seeing me more closely? On the contrary. And what? You ask too many questions. Oh, you don't like being asked questions. No. Got something to hide? Yes. Good. And suppose I promise not to ask any more questions. You're very charming. Quite unlike any person I've painted before. I wonder. Here we are. All fixed. Now you can use it again. Someone should recognize the girl. The people who attend the Duke's exhibits are not likely to know such an obscure girl. But his exhibits are public. Anybody can get in. You better persuade him not to show that picture. That might arouse his suspicions. Buy it back from him. You said he gave you only 5,000. I don't think he would part with it. The girl in that painting was one of Bluebeard's victims. Naturally, I'll do anything in my power, Inspector. Thank you. What do you know about the painter? Nothing. I bought the canvas largely on the recommendation of the art dealer. Although, of course, I recognized its great merit. Who was the art dealer? Uh, Jean Lamarte. You know him? Only by reputation. Lamarte. What did he tell you about the painter? As a matter of fact, he was evasive on that point. But he did intimate the painter was someone of reputation who executed this canvas under the pseudonym of Albert Garrel. Le Monte. I think I'll pay my visit. Hmm? Don't seem to recall such a canvas. Of course, the Duke buys many pictures, and not all for me, unfortunately. But this one uh, he recalls distinctly having bought here. It was painted by one uh, Albert Garon. Albert Garon? I don't recall the name. <laughs> Strange, because he informed me he paid 30,000 francs for it. Because you had told him that someday this painter would be uh, quite famous. I might have seen great talent in painting. 
I'll frequently test my own judgment successfully. Have you, uh, by any chance, any other paintings by this Art Bergeron? I'm sorry to say I haven't. But I have a canvas by another very promising young man, if you are interested. Yes, I, I might be. This way, please. Uh, thank you. And this one is very reasonable. Yes. Yes, it's rather good. But not as striking as the Goron. You think you could uh, locate this Goron for me? He might have something else I would like. You must have a record of that painting. Come to think of it, I do recall that canvas now. A plain dark girl against a bizarre background. An old man brought it in to me one day. Oh, uh, the painter himself? Uh, no, some old man I've never seen before. He said he needed money. You happen to know his name? I paid cash. His name didn't interest me. Do you happen to know from whom he got the painting? No. He merely mentioned it had been the family a long time. But why all this interest in Albert Garon, may I ask? Well, I'm interested in his work. Are you sure you couldn't contact him for me? I wouldn't have the vaguest idea how to locate him. Well, I'm sorry, Monsieur Lamarté. I'm afraid we can't do any business at the moment. If I knew where to reach you, gentlemen. Oh, I might drop in some other time. Thank you. Jean? When did you get back? I'm straight off the train. Oh, what a filthy trip. I had to get bathed right away even before I could report to the office. Ah. You mean you have to go to the office tonight? Oh, yes. From the telegram I received, you think the whole of Paris was holding his breath until I got back. Was he with you? He? Oh, you know whom I mean. You never told him his name. Oh, Jacques. No, he was not with me. It was Jacques who sent the telegram. Francine, it's outrageous. You're never home anymore. That position of yours... Wait a minute. Remember our agreement? I'm not to interfere in your affairs, and you're not to in mine. For me, you'll simply have to wait. Good evening. I bought one of my little people for her to use as a model. Who is it, Lucille? Uh, it's one of my customers. Then why are you making clothes for men? <laughs> for puppets. The puppeteer. Well, have them come in. I'll stay out of sight. It's my little sister, Francie. Oh. I'm sorry she isn't presentable. I'd like you to meet her. Tell him to come in and wait. I won't be long. Won't you come in? What's the matter? Was he afraid to... <sighs> Good evening. Francine, this is Gaston Morel. How do you do? Usually better than this. I'll be out in a minute. I really can't stay. I thought if you had one of the puppets for fittings, that they're... They're all pretty much the same size. Oh, then you want me to go right ahead and make the clothes? Certainly. I'd be glad to. Then if you'll excuse me. I'm very glad to have met you, mademoiselle. Happy to have met you. Good night. Good night. Just a customer, eh? Yes, just a customer. Well, that's the first time I've heard them called puppets. Oh, they just came with the puppet. Oh, sure, to keep it from breaking. 
Well, he's not bad looking. The one who pulls the strings, I mean. Oh, Francine. I can't tell you how glad I am. Well, of course, we all are to have you back. Thank you, Inspector. Oh, may I present my sister? Your sister? But you never told me you had such a charming sister. I'm no fool. How do you do? I'm very happy to know you. Really, Francine has told me a great deal about you. Thank you. Gentlemen, that will be all for the present. But now you must tell me about your, uh, your success. Would you sit down? And you? And now we can talk. Tell me all about yourself. I thought you called me back here on business, about Bluebeard. Bluebeard. He's a thorn in my side. You seem to be getting nowhere. What have you done so far? Here's a complete dossier. I want you to read it when you find time. Up to recently, I had him classified as a painter. But we have questioned practically every art authority in Paris. Yes, Professor Boisin, and even Recamy and Down. And now are questioning artist models. But no one seemed to know this man's technique. Well, I don't quite follow you. You see, I had a painting that the Duke of Cadino bought. However, it would be much quicker to show you. Would you come along, too? You two go ahead. I'll stay here. All right. It's only down the hall. We'll be back in two minutes. Next month, Helen Barreau. Helene Barreau. Mademoiselle Francina Cheng. Delight. How do you do? How are you, Renard? Oh, thank you. I'm very well. Commissaire de Chambre. Le Roy. You are an artist's model? At the Beaux Arts. Will you please study that picture? Have you any idea who actually painted that picture? No. You will notice the distinctive style. In what would you say that distinction lies? In the background. Exactly. Have you ever known a painter who used that type of background? No. Next girl, Mimi Robert. And so it goes, Francine, with no one seeming to know this painter's work. Perhaps if I were to question Lamarté. No, no, no. He's too suspicious already. Lamarté is the dealer who sold Duke the painting. I suspect that he knows the painter, but I have no proof yet. Would you mind questioning a few, Inspector? I've been at it for hours. <laughs> well, certainly, Renard, certainly. <laughs> You understand, Mademoiselle, you're not here on trial for any offense. Oh, that's good. We are merely codifying witnesses. You are uh, an artist model. But of course. What do you take me for? Mademoiselle, that's beside the point. <laughs> Why is it possible? I've modeled the greatest painters of France. Oh, no doubt. But we are only interested in uh, contemporary artists. And the most famous sculptors, too. You know, of course, uh, the Venus de Milo. Oh, yes. <laughs> An historic masterpiece. But surely you're not going to tell us you modeled for her. <laughs> Why? I'm the exact duplication of her measurements. But recently, have you been occupied as a model? Well, uh, <laughs> Not exactly as a model. Uh, you see, uh, since I've retired, well, I've seven. been... Uh, I don't uh, think you need to go into that. <laughs> Just one question. Do you know who Albert Gallon is? Albert Gallon? But of course! Who is he? Bluebeard! Take a look at that picture. A 
Have you any idea who that painter might be? Well, when I modeled for Monet... The question is, do you know who painted them? No. Next model. Lorenzo Perros. I have an idea. The Duke of Carignan writes, you want a portrait of your daughter and asks me to help you find a satisfactory painter. Being strangers here, we naturally look to the Duke, who is a relative, for recommendations regarding a number of things. My trousseau, chiefly. The Duke is a man of excellent taste. Yes. Among his paintings, I noticed one that particularly attracted me. Uh, the canvas of a young girl against a rather startling background. Uh, I was wondering if this painter is available. What did the Duke to say of that painter? Unfortunately, we had no opportunity of asking him. You see, we only arrived in Paris last evening, just before the Duke left town. Yes, and since we're sailing back to South America before he returns, we had the chance only for a few intimate matters, and uh, I mentioned wanting a portrait. What was this painter's name? I couldn't make it out very well. Uh, Karoff Car or uh, Caron? Uh, Garon? Possibly. At any rate, whoever he is, his flesh tones are superb. It was that which uh, decided me that this is the painter to capture my daughter's subtle beauty. Please, father. Unfortunately, Monsieur Deschamps, I do not know the painter you have referenced. But uh, surely, Monsieur, for a uh, commission, you could uh, look him up? Rather a good commission? I would know where to find him. But uh, for a commission of 75,000 francs, you could uh, advertise? Advertise. But mind you, I don't promise that we have success. Well, at least you can try. Oh, by the way, uh, let me give you a little something on account. Uh, that isn't necessary. But if I do find this painter, and he turns out to be someone of reputation, painting under a pseudonym, he may not wish to use that name. Whatever name he paints under does not concern me, so long as he is the painter who did the canvas I like so much. It's better to have such matters understood. But it will have to be painted soon. Don't forget, I want to take it with me to South America. I'll do my best. If I have any good news for you, I'll get in touch with you at once. At the Dukes. We will be most grateful to you, Monsieur Lemarte. Thank you. your proposition. 25,000 francs, if you will do. 25,000? I might even get you 30. Oh, that would give me a magnificent puppet show. A dozen of them. What's the proposition? A rich 
South American wants a portrait of his daughter. Oh, I thought so. No, I've told you, I'm through painting. And so you can be, for good, after just this one. Think of it, Gaston, 30,000 francs. I am thinking of it. No, it's too risky. Besides, I've told you, I won't pay any more of your girls. But this is different. This is a portrait. And this is safe. She's leaving almost at once for South America to be married. And she's making the painting with her. It's a trap. Do you think I would run any further risk? If there's no risk, why shouldn't I paint her at your studio? My studio? Yes. The workroom over your shop. That's all right to paint a portrait in. Why? Yes. So it is. I paint her there or I don't paint her. All right. All right, Gaston. You paint her there. So the shop will be completely surrounded with every possible escape route. But how are we to know that this Garong has actually showed up at Le Monte's? We'll give you a signal. The sham can stand at the window and light his cigar. You notice that window at the back of the office. Station someone that can watch the window and relay the signal. But don't enter too soon. Give the painter a chance actually to start painting. That's it. We must have something on canvas as evidence. Perhaps, uh, Francine, you could persuade the painter to demonstrate the, the background he intends to use. I'll try, surely. The signal will mean only that the artist has arrived and started painting. Yes. I'll leave uh, the time to you, Renard, but remember, you are also absolutely responsible. He further stipulated that there should be absolutely no visitors. Not even you, sir. Rather than risk his outright refusal, I accept it. Yes, but uh, my daughter... Oh, you needn't be concerned about me. And I'm sure Lamarté will not object if you wait here and smoke. Not at all. We will. So, if you will be good enough to excuse us, I'll take the lady to our pink. finds it more satisfactory that way. The senorita is here. Are you ready? Quite ready. I hope you will be quite comfortable. If there is anything you want, you have only to call down the speaking tube. Thank you. The artist understands the need for haste is quite agreeable. Therefore, I won't take up any more time. Ask you to do that yourself. The effect will be more individual. Seat. 
Surely you must have done some pictures other than the one I saw at the Duke's. Haven't you? Pardon? I said I would love to see some other pictures you've done. Thank you. In hand, please. curious back here, if you would like to look at them. But I wouldn't like to tempt prying eyes. I wore this simple dress thinking you might give me an interesting background. I liked particularly the background you gave that girl in the Duke's picture. Do you think you could do one for me like that? I could. You have not liked it, your cigar. Eh? Oh, uh... Well, I've been smoking a little too much lately, and uh, besides, I got interested in this statue. Good. Then you won't mind excusing me a moment while I go up and see how our painting is coming on? By all means. Go ahead. Don't you think we'd better? I'll tell you when. But your shoulders! Can't you straighten up? Not so square. Well, I've asked you to pose me. I'm quite helpless about such things. Surely it can't be so difficult for you to be yourself. What's the matter? Lucille's puppeteer. Lucille? So you're blue, Who said so? The Marte. The Marte. And you believe what the Marte told you? have you told that I painted the pictures you sold to the Duke? No one. No one. You're not telling me the truth. And you were trying to sneak out of here, leaving the blame for this to me as well. No. No. I want it. from here when they got in. Beep, <laughs> beep, 
He took her out there. During him, we were before, not even that close. Le Marte was the only one that we had to follow. Unless, unless I can find out what happened to that cravat. But I've been all over town, making the rounds at the shops and nothing. A cravat? Yes, this one. He used this? Yes, as a garrote. Then you think the owner of this cravat is the murderer? Very likely. If not, he probably could take us to the murderer. The scene. The scene. I don't know how to say this. But you know how I felt about Francine. She's your sister. If I only could make you believe, I will do everything I can. We have something in common, haven't we? Yes. Perhaps I should go in. Please do. I mend it for you. This? Very likely. What happened to the stitches? It may not be the same one. I have several alike. Several? Half a dozen, maybe, at home in my drawer. May I ask where you got them? In a little shop. On a plaster of glaze, I think. Why? I just wondered. It's such... Unusual material for a cravat. Yes. Fragile. Would you be so kind? Would you care to go in? My interest is in the living. I call chiefly to offer my condolences. Thank you.
see you. I must see you. May I come in? Please do. I mended for you. All right. If you must know, I threw it away. Oh, I wish I could believe you. You've been through a lot this year. Sit down. Let me bring you something. Some cognac? Nothing. Thank you. Where were you last night? Right here. Or here in my puppets. The whole evening? I did go off for a little while. To paint someone. Haven't I told you I don't want to paint anymore? But that merely meant you wouldn't paint me. Why was that? What good would it do to tell you? You don't believe anything I say to you. Why wouldn't you? As a matter of fact, I was becoming too fond of you. Fond? Yes. But it was more than fondness. I found myself falling in love with you. Really in love. Why should I prevent you from painting me? Lucille, I'm going to tell you something no other living person knows. Then maybe you'll understand how much I do love you and why I don't want to paint you. I was a very ambitious youth, Lucille, and extremely sensitive. I almost starved to death as an art student. I didn't mind physical starvation, but there was something in me, a burning ambition striving to paint something really worthwhile, something fine, I worked feverishly at the Beaux-Arts, never seeming to get anywhere. I painted every model who came there, but the canvases all turned out to be one after another, just ordinary. And then, one night, as I was going home to my garret, I came across a girl. She collapsed. I didn't know what to do. My garret was close by. I carried her there took care of as best I could. I had little money, barely enough for my paints. She needed nourishment or she would have died. Somehow I managed to get her the things she needed. Then one day to pass the time, I began to paint Jeanette. That was her name, Jeanette LeBeau. There was something in her fever tormented eyes that was almost spiritual. Something that reminded me of someone I'd seen. Then it came to me. The Maid of Orléans. I'd seen the tomb of the Maid of Orléans, and it inspired me. Then by chance I sold the painting to Lamartine. Jeanette recovered after that, and then one day, without a word, she disappeared. And then one night, Lamartine turned up at my garret with a letter. It informed me that the Academy had awarded my picture the Maid of Orléans, the prize. It would hang in the Louvre. And I was being recommended for the Legion of Honor. My work in the Louvre. I was almost insane with joy. Quite naturally, I wanted to share my happiness with the one who was chiefly responsible for it, Jeanette. I went looking for her, searching everywhere. At last, I traced her through the doctor I'd called in for her. He gave me her address. I went there. Outside her door, I heard laughter. But what laughter? Then, it was 
just then I really saw her. She invited me in. But she wasn't the same Jeanette. This was the real Jeanette. A low, coarse, loathsome creature. She offered me money. I suppose she thought she could repay me with money. Suddenly, the sight of that Jeanette did something to me. Something indescribably infuriating. I thought they would stop her defiling the image I created of her. Stop her degrading my work. I thought that would be the end of what she could do to me, but it wasn't. Every time I painted again, I painted Jeanette. So I turned to making puppets, because I could make them of wood. Because when they became Jeanette, I could take up my fury on them. I couldn't kill wood. No money in puppets. At least not enough for Lamarté. I owed Lamarté a lot of money. And only he knew that I'd killed Jeanette. So I had to paint for Lamarté. He wanted pictures of girls he could sell. But again, every girl I painted turned out to be Jeanette. I couldn't permit it. I couldn't stop myself. Every time I painted her, I had to kill her again. Finally, life gave me nothing to me, not even my own. I saw you. In you, I knew I had found what I'd missed in my existence. What I'd thought I might find in Jeanette and didn't. In you, I saw a chance for fulfillment. I knew I couldn't live my life over again to deserve you. I knew I couldn't undo the wrongs I'd done. But I could prevent further ones. That's why I definitely quit painting once and for all. I decided there must be no more killings for your sake. That's why I couldn't beat you. Now do you understand? Yes. Yes. Why, Francine? Francine. I didn't want to kill her. I accepted that one last commission because it would mean independence. There wasn't to be a chance for a slip-up. That's why I was to paint for at La Mate studio, with him standing by. I didn't recognize the girl that came there as your sister until it was too late. All I realized suddenly was she was coming between us, you and me. Cutting me off from you. Wrecking our one chance of happiness. Do you think anything could justify her murder? Anyone seeking to destroy our happiness is a menace. A menace that would have to be done away with. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do. You're not thinking of going to the police? Why not? You wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? Lucille! You couldn't do that to me. Not you, Lucille. And even if you could, I wouldn't let you. I wouldn't let you turn against me, too. Oh, no, not you, Lucille. Not you. I saw when you looked at that cravat that you had some idea. 